Today, what I'm doing is I've got this 48 volt battery and it has a busted BMS, so it's never worked right. Here's the BMS right here. It's a smart BMS. It's a proprietary one, I believe, DS11V1. It's not a JBD or anything else that we're used to. And I think the thing that happened to the BMS, uh, this battery, you might have, guys may have seen the video. I did a video of the battery. It arrived with some damage internally, but what had happened is this back side of the lid, it has the bottom side of the terminals here, and these are real close to the cells right here, and it dented into the cells. I think it may have, it's possible that it may have shorted on the cell case or something like that. I, I couldn't see well enough if it had actually breached this material. So I ended up putting uh, some fiberboard right here. Like I said, I think it may have shorted the BMS. So I'm putting this JK BMS on. All I'm doing is I'm taking the existing balance wires and I tucked the headers off. I desoldered the headers from this BMS. There's one right here. I'm just soldering the wires that came with the JK onto those headers. And yes, I'm, I'm actually just leaving the length of the wire the way it came stock because I don't really want to cut it up. I might use it for something else. I've got this one connector already soldered up and I've got heat shrink all around it. So hopefully we're not going to get any kind of shorts. I did hold it up to the sunlight and I could see light through each, between each pin. So we should be good to go. Uh, so now I just got to solder up this last bit and then we can put the BMS in. So let me fire my soldering iron back up. And this actually will be the first time I've used a JK BMS. I've heard such wonderful things about them, but I've, I've never had one. And this one was sent in, it was donated to, uh, I created a driver for the Victron Servo GX, the open source one that people load on a Raspberry Pi. That driver works with Bluetooth JBD BMSs. And people were asking for me to implement the JK, the Bluetooth JK. So this was sent in, it was donated to serve that purpose. So we're actually going to get this battery working again, and then I'll have a JK BMS to where I could finish that driver. <laughs> so attend the wire. We'll put a little piece of heat shrink on. And then we can go ahead and solder it up to the connector. I got to tell you, this is not the easiest. There we go. Give a little tug. All right, so we've got the main harness hooked up. We've just got this last one, and there's only two pins on here. I took the rest of the pins off because apparently uh, these BMSs can go up to 24 cells, and I only need to go to 16. So I just took off all the extra wires. I didn't cut them. I, I removed I extracted the pins, so I still have them here. I can put them back in if I need to. And our last wire here. Yeah, everything's on. So we'll put the heat shrink on now. All right, so there's our heat shrink. We just need to shrink it. Um, this last pin on this header and the other header here is not connected, so don't think I'm missing one there, if you see that. I don't know if you can see it, but there's no bridges in between. 
All right, so now what we get to do is, since we know there's no bridges in between, we're not going to short the battery. We're going to go ahead and plug this into the battery. There we go. And what we need to do now is take these two connectors and they're going to plug into the BMS like this. But we're not going to plug it in yet because we're going to check each pin with my multimeter to make sure that they're in the absolute correct order. Because if they're not, then we risk damaging the BMS. And, you know, even if it doesn't damage the BMS, it's not going to work right. <laughs> so basically, we're going to put the negative probe on the most negative wire, which will be this one. We want to see it the voltage raise about 3.3 volts every time we move the positive probe over. So start here. We got Thirty three three forty forty three three forty. Oh, what happened here? Forty six six. Okay, so now I've got two connectors. I've got to still con hold this on the negative, <laughs> and then I've got to connect this. So the last one was 46.6, right? So this one should be 50, I think. Yep, 50. And then we should have 53. There it is, 53.3. All right, they're all in the correct order. All right, guys, so I went ahead and hooked up the BMS, and it's all working perfectly fine. Now, there was a couple of things. One, I actually went and looked up the wiring diagram for this BMS before I hooked it up I just wanted to double check to make sure I wasn't doing anything wrong and it turns out you actually need one more wire this B plus wire has to be connected to the most positive side of the battery I think that's how the BMS gets its own power to power itself uh, luckily I did have another spot right here on this connector that was exactly the same as the one next to it. So these two end wires uh, both go to the most positive side of the battery. The other thing, I ran into a little bit of issue and took me some time. This BMS had a password on it so I couldn't get into it <laughs> via the app. I read some posts on the internet and it said that you could contact JK and they could send you a temporary password. And I did, and they did send me a code, but it didn't work. And I think that's because you have like a time frame that you have to use it, like maybe 10 or 15 minutes. And well, they're responding in the middle of the night and there's no way I'm gonna catch it in time. So it turns out there's actually another way to get past the password protection. If you're programming software to communicate directly to this device, you don't even actually need the password. The password is just for the app. <laughs> and it's funny because the password is stored on the device and it sends the password to the app and then the app asks you for the password and the app compares the passwords to see if you entered the right one. So long story short, after I started writing software to communicate with the BMS, it sent me the password and I then used that password to log into the app I got in and I was able to reset the default password. So all is good now, crisis averted, 
and we can move on. All right, so I got everything wired up. I got the negative cable all reconnected to the lid and also the positive cable. Got the BMS stuck down with some double-sided tape. Got the balance wires just routed down here and just kind of coiled up on the side of the battery and taped up. So it's all good. We can actually just close this lid There we go. Now the BMS does have this switch, which I've tucked off for now because I don't want it to just kind of rattling around in the box and maybe shorting out on something. But uh, if this is the way I'm going to keep the battery, uh, I will probably just drill a hole and put this on. All right, so I say let's hook this up to like an inverter and pull some loads. So here we go. We've got an inverter connected to our fixed battery and we've got the app pulled up so let's go ahead and turn the inverter on okay it's booting up there all right looks like we've got ac on the output terminals discharging at 0.2 amps so that would be the idle consumption of this inverter. Let's plug this heater in to pull a load. There we go. All right, there we go. Now we're pulling 14 amps, 750 watts, 730 watts. Let's see if we can crank this heater up. Okay, now it's on high. We're pulling 1,464 watts. Now this BMS in here uh, is technically a 200 amp BMS. However, it would not be wise to try to use that full 200 amps. This battery was built around a 100 amp BMS. So that means that the, the existing wire that's in here, the bus bars and terminals and everything that was used to construct the battery, the cells, was built around 100 amp. We need to go in here and make sure. Okay, well, it's already set up to do only 140 out of the 200. But just to be safe, I'm just going to change it to 100. 100 is plenty for what I need to do. So it's set to 100 charge and 100 discharge. Actually, really, should be probably set to 50 on the charge. There we go. So we'll do 50 on charge and we'll do 100 on continuous discharge. So if you guys ever do anything like this, if it's just building a battery or maybe replacing a BMS in a battery, you need to stress test it after your work is done. You need to put a heavy load on it and check to see if anything is getting hot. Because you could have a bad connection or just something is not right and you want to make sure nothing is getting hot and you really want to do that while you're pulling a load that's going to be basically the max load that you're going to use you know if this if this battery can handle 100 amp continuous then you really should put a 100 amp load on it and test it to see if it's getting hot i always recommend that when you're building anything like this it doesn't matter if it's a battery or a complete system don't just put it together and then go, all right, I'm done, and then just start using it without really testing it. All right, so let's go ahead and plug this heat gun in as well. Now we're already pulling 14, 60, close to 1,500 watts. Let's see what this guy does. Okay, so we're doing 2,000, 40 watts. We're doing over 3,000 watts now. <laughs> We're pulling 60 amps. So I kind of want to let that run for a little bit. So I can check and make sure that nothing's getting hot. Okay, so I think we've been running for, I don't know, a good 15 plus minutes. Let's take a look at the battery with a the thermal camera. 
So we see the terminals and the wires. There's the BMS and the wires coming out of it. And then the negative wire going into the battery. Now, of course, it looks hot, but it's not. It's just that it's hotter than everything else around it. That's the way thermal imaging cameras work. If we zero in on which looks like the hottest spot is this cable right here coming out of the BMS or going into the BMS. We're showing like 22C, which is just slightly over 70 degrees Fahrenheit. So nothing to be concerned with there. So this is the front of the inverter where the AC is. We're actually seeing warmer temps on the AC cable of the heat gun here. Yeah, and it does feel warmer. I think we were seeing Looks like 35C. And if you don't have a thermal camera, you can just use one of these infrared thermometers. Just point it at something. 68 on the wire. So pointing at the wire that we saw in the thermal camera that said a little over 70 is showing 68 with this thing. So pretty close. Yeah, nothing in here getting overly hot. All right, guys, so I think that's going to be it for the video. That was a fun project. I definitely do want to get around to some more projects, and I do have more projects. I've got some stuff coming up. So that's it, and I'll catch you in the next one.